So when I started out, I was just going to shoot this DVD player to demonstrate the infrared laser and how my camera would pick it up with the infrared cut filter removed. And then I found that this machine actually has a problem. So before putting it back together, I figured let's fix it because this DVD player has a unique ability to be able to play back DVD RAM discs. One of the few that did other than the DVD recorder. Let's check it out. This is a Panasonic DVD player. This one is uh, an old one, a very old player. This is a model DVD S35. It was one of the few that could play back DVD RAM discs. And I took this apart just to demonstrate the laser. But this one's got a problem besides that. And the reason I've taken it all apart to this state is because I need to show you guys a switch that needs to be cleaned on these. Otherwise, the disc will not load properly. And this one has that problem. So to get to this state, all I did was I just I just simply removed the top cover. Whoops. And try not to drop screws in. So maybe we'll put this back together just so you guys know how to take it apart to this, this point. This cover just sits on here like this and locks into place. But it's kind of tricky to uh, to get it apart. You actually have to pull the front cover off to do it properly. But I'll show you guys how to get to this and then we're going to clean. There's a switch on this that, that does need to be cleaned. So to release the front cover, we just release these two little clips on the side and there's a couple more on the bottom. And the whole front cover will pull off the unit. So there's a couple more clips on the bottom down here. The front cover will, will lift out of the way. You cannot operate it without the cover in place because power gets to the, the front board through this connector here. But to get into this portion to clean this little switch down here because this little switch is where it causes a lot of problems. With the door closed normally it's closed like that. This uh, disc clamp is in the locked position so this is in here like this and it's locked in place that's normally locked like that to release the disc clamp there's two little tabs on the side that you just pull pull them like that and then the disc clamp will push back and you gotta kinda pop it up here at the same time because it is magnetic and then the disc clamp will lift off and then you can get to the switch that goes bad on these units and what it does as well it causes it to not load it won't it won't accept the disc it'll sit there and the, the tray will go back and forth back and forth and it'll, it won't load properly so we're gonna clean this one and see if this machine, machine will actually play so I'm just gonna use some neutral and I'm just gonna flood this switch with it in here Activate the switch a few times just to clean it. This is just a little like a contact switch, a momentary contact switch. What it does is it rides a groove on the bottom side. It rides a groove on the bottom side of the disc tray. So when the disc tray is open, it this little this little raised portion of the, the tray depresses the switch that tells the system that the switches or the the disc tray is open so if I drop this back into place and put the disc cover back on it should fix the problem that this one was experiencing or it wouldn't close or open properly I'm now going to remove the entire assembly I want to there's another switch on the bottom side here that I want to get at because if one is bad, the other is also going to be bad. And it's on that little circuit board by my thumb. So I have a little switch down here. This one likely is dirty too. Make sure that's tight. Okay, to get to that switch I have to unsolder 
the two motors and remove that screw. There's a little micro switch right down here that is activated also when the it's activated when the laser goes up and down. Right, so when the right when the laser is unloaded, there's the two switches. There's the one on the tray that indicates when the tray is out all the way, like now. And then when the tray loads all the way in, there's a second switch which is on the bottom side. So as the traverse comes up, the second switch down here is activated to tell the system that the laser is in the loaded position. And I think that switch also needs to be cleaned. So we're just going to remove the solder off the, the motors here. I'm not going to disconnect the optical block because I don't want to worry. I, I mean, to disconnect it, I just have to put ju jumpers on the two laser diode shorting pads there, but I'm not going to remove that. I'm just going to lift down the motor. I can unplug this side here for the motors. I can unplug that one. I'm so the two motors and flip the board over. I want to clean that switch as well. Well, this uh, while my soldering iron is warming up, I want to show you guys something else that is completely unique to this model of DVD player. This is the bottom side of the spindle. And you see this? There's reflective surfaces on here. See them? In the shot in the light, you can see the light reflecting. There's a better shot of them there, you see? As I turn the the spindle, there's a, a reflective surface on the bottom side of this. And what that there is there for, and that's what makes this unit quite unique. I'll show you this. On this player, there is an optical sensor right here. pointing up at the bottom side of the spindle motor. And you're probably wondering, why the heck is that there? What is the purpose? Why do they need to watch the spindle spinning? Remember what I said about this, this player, right? This is one of these players that can play back DVD RAM discs. The player needs to know how fast the disc is turning when accessing DVD RAM discs. It needs a a hard coded method of determining the speed. So it actually measures the speed of the disc using that little optical sensor so that it knows how fast the disc is going. DVD RAM discs do have hard sectors on them that are detected by the laser but th those are used for marking where it is on the disc itself, what sector it's reading off the disc. The player needs to know the RPM as well, and it can't get that information off the disc. On a conventional DVD-R or DVD video or DVD plus R or RW, the speed is determined by the wobble groove that's, in, that's recorded on the disc. There's a wobble groove recorded that is used to burn the information when the disc is recorded and once the disc is played back it can track the speed of the disc based on the actual data that's recorded and reading the wobble groove in the case of a DVD-R. But that's not the case with DVD-RAM. DVD-RAM, because the sectors are each a different length, it needs to be able to know what speed the absolute speed is of the disc that's spinning irregardless to what's coming off of the disc itself and it uses a hard sectored reflective mirror type uh, on the uh, bottom of the spindle motor on the platter. It's hard to see from this angle but they are there. There's their silver, see? Anyway I figured I'd just show you guys that because I said these these players are kind of they're kind of unique. 
So I'm just going to remove the motors. Just disconnect them here. So I can remove the circuit board and clean up that other switch, which I know is going to be dirty just from just from all the years of it just sitting around not being used. Disuse causes more problems with electronics than you could ever imagine. And I don't want to just spray contact cleaner uh, into this area because I don't want to contaminate the laser lens. So you got to be really careful when you're spraying anything around optical pickup. You know, the overspray can really wreak havoc on optical pickups. Voila, a switch. If I can open the switch up. Take it right apart and Clean up the contacts inside. That's always the best way, right? Open the switch up, take the top off, and actually lift the, the switch out. Oh, look, it's black. Yeah, it's really, really dirty in here, so we'll get a shot of cleaner. Deox it probably would do a good job in this one if I can get in there and actually actually clean the contacts. It's as you can see, if you look down inside here, those contacts are, yeah, they're, they're, they're bad. So let me get my deoxid in there. We'll see if I can clean this up. I'm just using the actual applicator just to kind of scratch the surface and hopefully that will that will break up enough of that oxidation in there that operating the switch now will completely clean it up Which way it goes on, or does it matter? I think it does. Yeah, it snaps in place one way and not the other. So there we go. That's on. We'll plug it back in. Plug the speed sensor cable back in on this side. Not a lot of room to work here. And it goes in like that. And it drops on there like that, and that one screw holds it in place. As I've said before, normally you know you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't go to this much trouble for a basic DVD player, but this is not a basic DVD player. It's it's got that ability to play DVD RAM discs. Even the discs that are in cartridges, you just take them out of the cartridge, take the disc out of the cartridge, and they'll play on this player. So that makes these ones kind of a, in a in a position that they're. They're worth trying to save if you have DVD RAM discs that you want to be able to play back. I checked all the ESR on the capacitors and the power supply. They're all testing good, so I don't have I'm not concerned about them. 
I figured I would give them a, a, a just a check over too while I had it apart, but they're all testing good, so nothing to do in that department. tray back in. And put the top back on. And then the front goes back on it. And if I put it together right, everything should work. Okay, power the unit up. There we go. And reading the disc. This is a DVD dash R. I'll put a RAM disc in here in a minute too. Okay, DVD dash R. This is my air show disc and play. That video calibration actually came off of my, uh, that was recorded using my JVC 9911. I'm sure we've seen this one before, right? This is just the raw footage. And load the next disc. I'll go get a RAM disc in a minute to show you guys that too. So, next disc. Tray is operating nice and, nice and smooth now. No more of this stuttering going back and forth, which it was doing before. It wouldn't load the disc half the time. It would open and close and open and close. Now it's playing the disc properly. There's an even older, older show. That old CDR here with MP3s on it. It should read that too. Hopefully it will read this disc. It's a beat up disc here, but we'll see whether it will read it or not. It should. Should read this disc. No problem. This is a CDR with uh, MP3s on it, 97 tracks. And I could probably put this into uh, random play here if I remember how to play work this thing. Okay, so it's working. Working for MP3s. Let's go get a DVD RAM disc. Now, I remember we talked about DVD RAM. I've, I've talked about them before, but they came in two different styles. They came in these cartridge type discs, which obviously you're not going to fit in this one. And they also came in bare discs like this that you could take out. And if we look at this, this is a 4.7 gig DVD RAM. And here's what makes it completely different. If you look at the bottom of the disc, you will see that the disc has a series of hard sectors, like a hard drive. That's why that extra speed sensor that's on the bottom of the, the spindle motor on the, the platter, on the clamp, that's why that's required, because that's what's used to determine the speed. So when I place this disc in, 
the boot up procedure for RAM is a little different than other discs. Watch what it does when it spins up. These take quite a while to read when you put a DVD RAM disc into one of these compatible players because it has to map the disc first so the laser will actually track all the way out to the end here momentarily as it's reading as it figures out what's on the disc and because DVD RAM can be there you see DVD RAM can be written in any order it's, it's not necessarily from beginning to end the laser can actually move back and forth as it's playing because of how the disc could be recorded because of course you could be recording and playing different things at the same time so while it's being recorded it's being written in different blocks so the pickup will actually move back and forth this is a program I recorded off of uh, cool TV it was a channel that we got it was an all jazz channel it was just wonderful on uh, on cable a while back just rewind it back here Montreal Jazz Festival cool TV kind of a neat program neat channel that we got and I recorded all kinds of this stuff off this channel when it was available. I got all kinds of classic recordings on DVD and on, on a DVD RAM. That's why I want to keep this player running as long as possible. Just as a backup so that uh, if my Panasonic, because I've got, uh, I've got three Panasonic recorders. I've got two DMR E20s, which is probably what this recording was made on. And I've got a DMR EH50 which has got the hard drive in it as well. But anyway, I want, I want to try and keep this machine as a playback machine, as a backup, just because it's, it's a machine that will play these format of discs. If I eject this disc, we'll, uh, I'll show you the, the, the cartridge-based discs. So the cartridge-based discs, this is one that says skips because I've damaged it. This is cheap Memorex crap. But uh, you can open the back of these discs up and actually remove the disc. And it's the same disc. See what's recorded on this disc. There were also nine gig double-sided discs so you could record on both sides, but you had to manually flip it. And again, it takes a while to read the DVD RAM recorders were a lot quicker at booting up and reading the initial table of contents than this player. But uh, these ones always were slow. Oh, this was a copy of a movie. This was a James Bond movie. So this is the behind the scenes stuff. I didn't actually record the movie. I did the behind the scenes of making of the movie. That's what this is on this disc. And I really don't want to show that because I don't want to get popped for that uh, scene but yeah but anyway that's what I put on this one it was behind the scenes the making of die another day that's what's on this disc what's on this other disc one more here see I got I got lots of these I got lots of, of these DVD RAM discs I probably had uh, I probably have about 20 or 30 of them that I used to use back in the day. I used to use these for time shifting. When everybody else was still using VHS tape to time shift, I was using DVD RAM. It was a game changer. Open the stupid thing up. There we go. And then we got uh, DVR, so that kind of made this redundant. Everything went onto a hard drive after that. Yeah, when the PVRs came out. Once again, the slow table of contents read for DVD RAM discs. This was a concert that was uh, played many years ago. Toronto rocks on much more music. This was a performance for some benefit, I guess, that was that was run back. <laughs> I say, I got to start going through all these old recordings. But anyway, that's DVD RAM. It was... Uh, an interesting format because and I've showed it off before it works like a hard drive you can you can delete individuals you can edit you can make programs shorter and when you made a program shorter like you could you could go and cut all the commercials out after the fact and um, once uh, you cut all the commercials out you'd actually regain the space on the disk so that was a 
probably satellite break up there not the disc anyway and that's uh, that's this uh, DVD player playing DVD RAM disc quite a unique player anyway that's uh, all there is with this one we'll catch you in the next one bye for now